I wanted to give a quick review of the business cycle. We've talked about it in class, but just to clarify a few things. Keep in mind the business cycle, it's more of a historical graph. It's not something that we're going to produce and show a change on or move a curve around and analyze the results. Instead, it just sort of describes what we've seen in the macro economy over time. Um, it's not meant to be too specific either. So for example, I put in these years, even though what I've drawn here probably doesn't fit real well with what we've seen, although that might depend on the country that you're looking at. It's just about trends over time and what we would expect to see from, a, from an economy as the years go by. So the two major parts that we care about are expansion and contraction. The expansions are seen from A to B here, uh, I'm sorry, on this segment until we get to this peak. Uh, again, until we get to this peak and this is expansion from A to B there and we haven't seen a peak there yet. The contractions are the opposite. It's the, uh, the part of the business cycle where real GDP is decreasing, like we see from C to D until we get to this trough. Likewise here from C to D until we get to that trough. The terms peak and trough can be useful to use. Um, there's nothing really significant about them except that they are the highest and lowest points of each wave of the business cycle. One thing to keep in mind that's interesting to note that even though we might be dissatisfied with the economy here, going from C to D, it's interesting to note, to note that the real GDP that this economy is producing is actually greater than what was being produced here at A or anywhere during this expansion. So the idea is that we expect progress to happen. And even if we're better off than we were 10 years ago, if our economy is shrinking, that is, we don't have growth, we're going to call it a contraction, which is a negative term. Okay, let's talk about the characteristics of an expansion and a contraction. Again, in strict terms, it's an expansion when real GDP is increasing, and it's a contraction when real GDP is decreasing. You could use another term here. You could use um, national output. You could use uh, economic activity. The point is, though, you're trying to measure production over time. During an expansion, we would expect to see jobs getting better, so more people are being hired. Um, the unemployment rate is decreasing. Wages are going up, salaries are going up, profits are going up, all sorts of good things. Ultimately, what we care about is that production, and that's what real GDP tries to measure, production has increased. One thing that people can view as a negative, although debatably it, it isn't, is that prices will be going up during this time too. Um, we'll, get, we'll talk more about this throughout the uh, unit, but that is one last characteristic. For a contraction, all of these things are the opposite, except for prices. With this, prices, for the most part, they don't go down, they just stagnate. So they'll basically remain the same. You can see prices drop, but that tends to be a different problem, and you don't tend to see it during just a run-of-the-mill contraction, although you might see it during a recession, or it's more likely at least. A recession is a type of contraction. A contraction does not become a recession until, you, until the economy has been decreasing, so production has been decreasing, for six months or two quarters. Obviously, two quarters is six months, so th that's two different ways of saying the exact same thing. Okay, we haven't talked about this blue line that's underneath. Um, we're going to refer to it more in a second, but it's, uh, as far as the diagram is concerned, it's just the line of best fit. So we see that over time, the line of best fit does have a positive angle. That is, we do see real GDP increase more and more and more over time. Okay, well, let's look a little bit more specifically at the relationship between the line of best fit in orange and the business cycle in black. This is looking at what we call output gaps. And this is gonna be an important idea as we start looking at how the economy works and how aggregate demand and aggregate supply interact with each other to relate it back to this idea of an output gap. So the idea of the best fit, the line of best fit in orange, is this is where we see our potential output. 
So it's sort of similar, but not exactly the same, but it's sort of similar to what we would have seen with the PPC. So the PPC is our idea of that's our potential and we can't go beyond it um, until we get more factors of production. So to push the PPC out required that we get more factors of production. So more land, labor, capital, or entrepreneurship, something like that. Well, this is a similar idea because it's over time and we are talking about a long amount of time. You know, this chunk of time, it's not a week. It's gotta be, you know, years, at least months. So what we're seeing is that if we look at how the business cycle goes, in retrospect, it's obvious that point A was higher than our potential. That is, we were producing at a greater rate than our potential allowed us to. Now that might seem kind of weird, like how do you do more than your potential? And this is where I always make the analogy of a distance runner. Someone has the potential of running a race in a quickest amount of time. Say they could run a marathon in, I think the record is around two hours and five minutes right now for a marathon. That's flying, okay? So if that's as fast as someone can go, well, that's over a long period of time. It's over 26.6 miles or 41.2 kilometers. That doesn't mean that for short bursts of time within that, that they can't go faster than whatever that pace is. So if the pace works out to be, you know, 18 kilometers per hour, I haven't done the math, but something like that, uh, probably I guess closer to 20 or 22. Anyway, whatever the pace is that gets them there in two hours and five minutes, they can go faster than that for a short amount of time. They're all capable of sprinting faster than that. But in retrospect, it would be clear that they were at a pace that was faster than what was sustainable for a long period of time. And it's that word sustainable that becomes really important because what we're saying is that we can continue to do it and it's within what we are capable of right then, okay? So what we notice is from the, this whole first yellow shaded section that the actual output in black is greater than the potential output in, uh, in orange, okay? So again, we would call that an output gap. We'll give that a more specific name later on. Here we see just the opposite, where the actual output in black is now below. So now we're saying that it could be doing better, but right now it's in sort of a slow section. How those th two things play with each other and become important will be more obvious later on. For now, you simply need to recognize that there is a gap and that the economy is gonna seek to correct that gap in some way or another.